six XL YouTubers as competitors. Four secret ingredients chosen with RAM between, all to compete in the XL hash. Yes, a new video series that's going to give the Iron Chef a run for her money. Welcome to Excel Hash. This is where six competitors take four secret ingredients, the frequency function, the max function, a form button, and a 3D model. And we have to take the ingredients and create an Excel solution. Now, all six of these YouTube Excelers are releasing the video on September 4th at 3 AM in the morning. Your job is to watch all six videos and then go and vote. Which recipe did you like the best? Now, I'm going to take these four ingredients and mix them with Power Query to import data. We'll actually talk about what the frequency does. Then we'll use max and frequency to calculate the max consecutive occurrences. Then we'll look at 3D models. We'll actually do a lookup formula to look up the 3D model. Then we'll use the form button with a macro to update the data source. And then we will refresh the data and see if everything updates. As a preview, let's go over here. Here's the data set. And we just need to count which city won Best City Award most times consecutively. There's our formula. And guess what? That's looking up the city icon on this sheet. Now, these are 3D models. They are amazing. It's not a flat picture. And you can click and drag and move this 3D model around anywhere. And to show you the end result, let's click this Update. It'll update the data, the formulas, and the lookup of 3D model should all update. We click. And the data set updated, the formula updated with a new winner, and our lookup of 3D model, it all worked. That is amazing. Now we're in the start file, and we need to count most consecutive wins. But first, we need to import the data set. And the data set is in an Excel workbook that we need to import. So we're going to go to Data. Get and Transform Data is Power Query. Go up to Get Data from File from Workbook. You want to navigate. Mine's on the desktop. This is one of the files you can download. Double click. Navigation just means, hey, from everything in that Excel workbook, you're allowed to select the table. I'm going to click Edit, not Load. Now, the table's fine, but one thing I want to make sure, since we're counting consecutive items, the sort of this really matters. So it's by year that we need a sort. Now, this came in sorted, but I'm going to sort it and add a step in Power Query during the import to make sure that we're safeguarding. So I'm going to click Sort Ascending. The steps are fine. The query name is fine. Close and load, close and load to table, existing, A3, click OK. All right, so that's dynamically connected to that external workbook, which will be updated. Now, before we do our formula, this is going to be a wild array formula. But we have to firmly understand what frequency does. Here's some numbers. If we point the frequency function to these numbers and give it these upper limits, it will count between each lower and upper limit. Now, the amazing thing about frequency is we just give it the upper limits. It automatically creates these categories, including less than or equal to the first upper limit, and one extra category that catches everything above the last upper limit we give it. And make sure that you notice, there's the number. The upper limit is included, but not the lower. So that 50 is counted here, where it's included as the upper limit. The 50 is not counted in this category. This category gets only 1, 2, 3. All right, so we highlight exactly one more cell than we have upper limits. And in the active cell, we type equals frequency. It needs the data. Those are the numbers we potentially want to count between the upper and lower limit. Comma, bins, those are the upper limits. Remember, frequency will automatically create these and do all of the counting. 
Also, this is an array function. If I close parentheses, and before I enter it, if I hit F9, I can see, sure enough, the definition of an array calculation is that whatever that calculation is, it delivers multiple answers simultaneously. Control Z. That's why we highlighted all the cells in advance. Because when we use the secret keystroke for array functions, Control Shift Enter, it automatically enters all those numbers into the cell. If you look up to the formula bar, those curly brackets are important. That's Excel telling you it understood that this was an array formula, and it should be calculated as an array formula. For us, when we do Control Shift Enter, we're telling Excel this is an array formula. The curly brackets are Excel telling us it understood and calculated it correctly. Now, if you go to any cell, you see the cell references are the same in each cell. Now, here's the crazy thing. We enter this as an array function into multiple cells, but we're actually going to use the frequency in a single cell. And just as we did F9 over here to evaluate, we're going to work on what frequency delivers in the cell to help us calculate most consecutive wins. Now, the other problem we're going to have to deal with is that is not a number. These are not numbers. And frequency must have numbers. So before we even jump into frequency, we have to convert all of the Alamitas in this column, then all of the Belmonts in this column to numbers. So the way we're going to do that is with the if function. I'm going to ask, and this is an Excel table, so I click right at the top. It puts the table name and the column name in square brackets. Are any of you equal to that city right now? Now, of course, if I click logical test in F9, that delivers trues and falses. But notice, there's a true in the second position because there's an Alameda, and a true true in the fifth or sixth or eighth and ninth row, Control Z. So for value if true, comma, I'm going to substitute numbers in for those trues. Highlight the same column. Now row, if I close parentheses, if I highlight just row, that'll tell me the row number. So F9, that gives me all the row numbers. But of course, the first part of if will pick out just the correct row number, Control Z. Now I'm going to come to the end. We intentionally leave value of false out because we want the if function to automatically insert a false value. Now I close parentheses, and if I F9, wow, now I have some numbers where all of the Alamedas are. Now this is the data for frequency. Also, the intent of putting the false in is because the frequency function is programmed to ignore logicals. It will just see the numbers. Now think about this. 5 means there's 1. 8 and 9 means there's 2. So if this is the raw data, all we need is an upper limit. So if I had a 10 as an upper limit, it would count these two. If I had a 6 as an upper limit here, it would count and get 1. Control Z. Now I'm going to copy this, Control C, because we will slightly amend it to get the upper limits. Now before the if, I'm going to type frequency. Right in data array, those are our numbers, comma. For bins, Control V. And guess what? All I have to do is change equal to Alameda to not equal. What does that mean? Look over here. That's 5. If I say not equal, that will be a 4, meaning the row 4. And that will be a 6. Down here for 8 and 9, not Alameda will be a 10. So I'm going to click in bins array and F9. And sure enough, there's our upper limit 6 for that 5. And there's our upper limit of 10 for the 9 and 8. Control Z. Come to the end. Close parentheses. Now before I enter this, I'm going to hit the F9 key. And there is my count for the city of Alameda of all of the consecutive appearances. 2, 3. Look at 3 looks to be the max. Control Z. So that's part one of the recipe. Now since we want max, that's part two. I'm going to come to the end, close parentheses. This needs to be entered with Control, Shift, and Enter. Now I can double click and send it down. 
Go to the last cell and hit F2. And now we have our formula to count most consecutive wins. Right now, it looks like Alameda is winning. The next part of the recipe is to look up the correct city 3D model. Well, I first need to look up the name of the city with the most wins. So I'm going to use the max function and first find the max number there. Close parentheses. Now I'm going to use that inside of the match function. And match will look up the max, comma, within here. Match will tell me the relative position, comma, zero, because we're doing exact match. If I hit F9, of course, Alameda is in the first position. So match is doing its job, delivering the relative position. Now we use index, array, and index. Those are the items you want to look up, comma. Now we have the row number or relative position. Close parentheses and Enter. Now this formula looked up Max and found the city name. But that result now is going to be in a, another lookup formula that will look up the 3D model. Now wait a second. How can we create a lookup formula for a 3D model when we don't even know what a 3D model is? Let's go over to the sheet Cities. Now I've already inserted all these, but here's how easy it is. You go up to Insert, Illustrations, and there it is, 3D Models. Click the drop down. If you have some 3D models from file, you can use that. But Microsoft offers some online sources. So I'm going to click. And here's the categories, Classroom. Oh, Chemistry. I'm going to click that one. Click Insert. And there it is. You can move it like a picture. But this little icon right here means you can flip it. You can pour the chemistry bottles upside down <laughs> to the side however you want. There's the perfect view. Now, I've already put the city names in the first column. This will be like the lookup column to find the name. Then we want to look up the 3D model. Now, when you're looking up a picture or a 3D model, you want to make sure that the picture is inside the cell. It usually is off in a separate sheet because you need to make the cells pretty big so they fit each one of the pictures or 3D models. All right, let's go back over to most consecutive wins. Now right here, I'm going to say equals index. The array I want to look up, I'm going to go over to cities. I'm actually trying to find the 3D model. So I'm going to click in the top one, hold shift, click in the last one. I see up in the formula bar, I hit F4, comma. Match, and I don't remember what cell that is, so I'm just going to put D4 or something like that, comma, because I need to look up the name in the range A2 to A19, so I hit the F4 key. We're actually going to use this formula in a defined name, so we need to lock them, comma, zero, close parentheses, close parentheses. Now, when I hit Enter, we're going to first have to fix that lookup cell right there. And I'm going to hit the F4 key because we are going to put this in a defined name. Now it'll look up 0 because it's not seeing the 3D model. The way look up a picture will work is we're going to copy this in edit mode, Control-C. I want to put that lookup formula as a defined name. Control-F3 looks up defined name, new. Right up here, this is going to be the name. So the name will be lookup picture. And then down here refers to Control V. Click OK. So we have a defined name with our lookup formula. We need to find any picture. I don't care what picture you insert. I'm just going to insert some picture and go like that. Now, that's a picture. We come up to the formula bar, type an equal sign, and we start to type our defined name, there it is, and Enter. And you got to be kidding me. I am looking up a 3D model. And it's crazy. I can come over here and move my 3D model. And that lookup formula respects that. So right now, it looked up the icon for Alameda. That formula could be off to the side somewhere. The last part is we need to have a form button. So I go up to Developer. If your developer ribbon isn't showing, you have to right click and go down to Customize Ribbon. All right, Controls, Insert, Form. I'm going to click and drag and draw. 
I don't want to assign a macro right now, but I am while it's in edit mode, those little dots. I'm going to come here and type a smart label, click to refresh data. Now, the line of code is one single line, but watch this. I'm going to cheat. I'm going to come down here and click Record Macro. I'm going to name it something like Update Data. Click OK. The keyboard to refresh all, you could go up to Data and click Refresh All, but the keyboard to refresh all is Control-Alt-F5. That's all I did. Now I'm going to come down here and Stop. Now I'm going to right-click Assign Macro. There it is. I'm going to double click. If you wanted to, you could go look at the code. There it is, Active Workbook Doc Refresh All. Click off to the side. Now, if you open up that workbook we had on the desktop, I have some new records here. I'm going to copy and paste it right below. Be sure to Control S to save it and close. Now, when I come over here and click Refresh Data, just like that, this table is updated. Control down arrow. It's got the latest data. The formulas over here have updated. Oh, San Bruno, that's where YouTube has its headquarters. And look at the icon. It looks like Disneyland. It totally worked. Data set, array formula, and lookup 3D model. All right, now it's your job. Go watch the other videos. Playlist link below this video. And then be sure to go and vote. The voting link is also below this video. And of course, if you like that video, click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe to all six of the XL YouTubers. And we'll see you next XL Hash.